guys, and welcome to the first episode of Teenage Wasteland, my new review show for different types and flavors of tea. So this very first episode is on Twinings of London's Irish Breakfast Tea. This one's still sealed since I, it's far from my first box of it. I just got the last one out of the last box. So anyway, so, and I dropped it. <laughs> ah, this one, um... The brewing instructions literally just says steep four minutes or to desired strength. So I'm going to let it do that while I talk about what it all lists on the box. So go ahead and open this up. Scent wise, it's not too different from English breakfast tea, ultimately. It's a really earthy sort of scent to it. Almost like you can smell... Oh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, we've owned horses and sort of what we've fed them in terms of, like, oats and barley. It kind of smells like that a little bit. It's not a bad smell. It's actually a very good smell. But, um, but yeah, so that's what it smells like. So I'm just gonna pop that in my mug of hot water here and let that steep. Get that going here. Do, 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 do. And then I'll just let it do its thing in a moment. While I talk, okay, it's nice and wet, and even on the little tag of the tea, it's got the Twinings of London logo, and the brew instructions right there, in case you didn't really look at this. And then on the back has the over 300 years of experience estimated 1706 thing on the back. That's a pretty good track record, I would just like to point out. Not only that, but... Here is a little bit of info, or not info, trivia, that you may not have noticed before because it's in such tiny writing in their logo. I'm going to point it out to you guys. In the really teeny tiny print here, is it going to focus? Let's see. Tapping my camera. I don't think it is. No, it's not. Okay, that's all right, but um, I'll read it to you guys. It says... By appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Tea and Coffee Merchants, R. Twining and Company Limited, London. This is what the tea, or what the tea drinks, what the Queen drinks in England. That's pretty awesome, if you ask me. So, on the front of the box, it's 100% pure black tea. And the tea profile that it lists here, the origins are Kenya, Indonesia, Assam, and China. The notes are thick, malty, and full-bodied, and the strength is five tea- or wait, four- I can count four tea leaves, which is their strongest strength, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah. It's got- well, not so much a chart of what the strengths are, but it shows in comparison to other teas in their line and how they line up. The only other one that compares strength-wise in terms of the caffeine is Lop Song Souchong, which I've actually never tried, so I don't know even what that is, but... Anywho, on the side of it here, it's got the Master Blender's notes, which is mostly the same thing. It's got the steep time, the strength, the notes, then color bright coppery red, which... Yeah, I should say, this is already pretty well getting there. Um, but yeah, it says, Our Irish breakfast tea pays tribute to the Irish who are well known for their love of strong teas, which, oh yeah, this definitely is. This blend combines teas carefully selected from four distinct regions to give it added body, flavor, and strength. The bold taste originates from teas grown in the tropical climate of Assam and the rich amber color from teas grown in the fertile Terra Rosa soil of Kenya. The hardiness from these regions is complemented by the softer and more subtle teas from Indonesia and China to yield a full-bodied tea with a smooth finish. Yeah, pretty much. And this got a best before date here, which is good till pretty much late 2017. This will be gone long before that. But, um, yeah, in terms of strength, this stuff kicks some serious ass, let me tell you. Oh my gosh, this... I have found I can easily substitute it in place of coffee and have it last way longer than coffee does and not really have much of a caffeine wearing off slump afterwards like I do with coffee. So I like that a lot about it. And it gives me way more energy and zip than coffee ever does to where I'm like, 
Wow, um, on the website it lists how much caffeine there is approximately per cup, and it's about right on par with coffee. And I even typically drink a way bigger mug of coffee than I do of this stuff, and it still kicks its butt for miles. Like, I can have a cup of this around 5 or 6 in the morning, and I'll still be feeling it until maybe 3 in the afternoon, at which point I may or may not have a second cup of it. Depends if I really feel like it or not, but... Yeah, it is really, really good for energy, I've found. May not be the healthiest choice, but it's healthier than coffee, I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, that. Coffee for me, if I drink it at the same time of the morning that I just mentioned, 5 or 6 in the morning, it'll be worn off by 9. Okay, not even gonna kid myself here. So, I feel like this stuff right here is what it's all about, so... Has it been about four minutes? I think it has, so. The scent of it changes once it's in the water, I should point out. I'm trying to think of how exactly to describe it, really. It's a much smoother scent, I've noticed, once it's actually in the form of tea. Um, it's still got that earthy earthiness to it, but... But it's a lot smoother now, I have noticed, so. It may still be too hot to drink, but I'm going to try anyway. Yeah, so, alright. Taste-wise, without adding anything to it, which generally I do like to add some honey to it, but before I've gone and added any of that to it, so I can tell you what it tastes like as is, and there's plenty of times I drink it even as is without adding anything to it. Um... It's almost got, oh, how do I even put it, um, like the very first second it hits your tongue, there's almost like a hint of butteriness to it, which sounds really weird, and it only lasts like a split second as soon as it hits your tongue, and then it changes. It does have a very strong taste to it. In terms of like the bitterness it is on the bitter side I'll be honest with you guys it's sort of an acquired taste but once you're used to it it's no big deal but um it has got a bit of bite to it for that but it's not a bad way though it's still really smooth even with the bitterness it's a smooth sort of bitter if that makes sense and I should point out it may be because of the caffeine content, but the one thing I'm not that wild about with this specific kind of tea, and I'm not sure if it's this brand in particular or just Irish breakfast tea all around, but it does kind of leave you with a little bit of a cotton mouth feeling afterwards, even after just a few sips. So I guess that's kind of genius in a way to keep you drinking it, so you'll keep coming back for more of the stuff. But yeah, if you actually want to quench the dry feeling in your mouth, you could probably need to drink some water, so. But ultimately, it does have a really good taste to it, even just as is, without adding anything to it. But if you should feel a need to enhance it with, be it sugar or honey, I choose honey because it's more natural than just dumping in a crap load of sugar to it. I realize that honey, I believe, has some sugar added to it, but it's not the same as just dumping in a bunch of sugar. So let's stir that in. You can add as much or as little as you like. Doesn't really matter. Do whatever it is you like with tea. <clears throat> and with that added... That little bit of bitter bite is now eliminated from it, but without really altering the overall flavor of it. And you can't really say that necessarily of every tea on the planet, but this is one where it doesn't ultimately change the base flavor. So I like that about it, in that you can pretty much doctor it up any way you'd like. It's still going to ultimately taste like Irish breakfast tea. So basically, I have nothing but good things to say about this stuff. I've always loved Twinings, but this in particular is a new favorite. 
I ultimately tried it for the first time. I switched over from English breakfast tea to Irish breakfast tea. I'll be completely honest because I heard it's Liza Minnelli's favorite, so I had to try it just on that alone, and then I think I found out why, and I found out just how much caffeine content's in there, and I'm like, oh, that's why she likes it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, so I pretty much am sticking to this now, now that I found out how much more caffeine is in this than the English variety, which only has a uh, three instead of a four on the strength, according to the box, so. So anyway, that's about all there is to say on this one. In terms of a uh, rating, I think I would give this, hmm, this is hard because it's the very first review of tea that I've done, so I'm trying to think of my rating scale here, but I think I would ultimately give this a really high rating of maybe a 9 out of 10. The only reason I don't give it a number 10 is just because of there is that slightly bitter bite to it that I'm, I know, I like sweet things more than bitter things. If it didn't have quite as much bite to it, I think I would give it a perfect 10, but because of that, I give it a 9, which is still really good, so. Anyway, that's all I have to say on this stuff, so as usual, if you liked the video, click the like button. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, leave comments down below, and until next time.